and welcome to hobby vlog number 64. Thanks for joining me. This week has been slightly lighter in terms of content for the vlog. Uh, I've spent a lot of time hobbying but quite a lot of it is for other videos like the Battle Games in Middle Earth video or the Tabletop Dungeoneers build which I'm not putting on the vlog because it's supposed to be a surprise for them. I've also not got as much done on the model railway as I expected, mainly because I've decided that I am going to have a tunnel and because of this I'm now waiting, hopefully this coming week it will arrive for two tunnel ends to come so I know how high I need the terrain to be to build it up so that the uh, railway can actually go underneath it. And until I've got that I can't really do very much at all apart from what you see which is working on the house. So yeah, it's been a really good week, it's been a busy week for me in just in general outside a hobby but I have got stuff done and I do hope that you enjoy this video and I will see you again at the end and, I, and please do leave a comment below if you have anything to say and I do always reply. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in a bit. So now we come to the really challenging part of the build and I actually think I've cracked it which is really really cool to be honest I'm quite pleased. So what we're looking at is this section here where you've got this blue ring here we've got a blue uh, with the doorway um, and then you've got the glass section at the top and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a taken apart Bic propelling pencil which I have already done. You can see the constituent parts of a Bic pencil here and this has a um, faceted shape which matches above there. The blue I wasn't sure of because this really does not take paint very well so even the paint that's going to have um, on the um, f f going down the lines I'm not sure how I'm going to do that uh, the panes around the panes of glass but what I have got is this other propelling pencil which I actually really like so I'm I'm going to be uh, quite sad to see this go but I'll sacrifice this for the cause and this will work well this top bit here will work well for that base because if we have a look they match up very nicely in terms of their diameter and then the little walkway I can make that out of this nice card which is not too thick but not too thin and I think that'll be fine how I'm going to do the railings is another question entirely which I will cross after I've done this but my challenge for today is to get that done so I've got my razor saw and I've got my I don't want to cut that one up I have my cut apart um, Bic pencil so I'm gonna start to uh, cut this to pieces I won't film it because it will sound nasty because I'll be cutting plastic with this and I will be attempting to get that section there out of this propelling pencil which hopefully won't be too hard um, because yeah, but I'm going to have to, I'm tight enough that I will save the lead that's in it um, in case that it does actually break the entire pencil, which it might do. Uh, but if I can try and just cut that top off um, and then seal the end, I'm not sure. I will, I will bring you back when I've done a bit. I'm rambling again, um, but I'll bring you back when I've done a little bit of a cut on this and seen whether it's going to work or not and whether I'm actually going to be able to successfully glue them together or not. So yeah, let's see. Let's see. So it cuts okay actually and not all that bad a noise. Anyway, I'll bring you back when I finish doing this. That was successful. I have the blue bit, the clear bit and the platform in between. I'm going to glue them together using PVA because that's going to probably be the best thing to do. So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to apply some PVA to the bottom of the this little blue ring and then if this doesn't work then I can always go to super glue and then I'll pick up the platform and hopefully that will stick and then very carefully get that centered it was centered and I knocked it because I'm clumsy doing tiny crafts when you're clumsy like I am is a challenge there we are. And then what I'll do is I'll take my clear bit, drop it just very lightly on top of my PVA. So I can coat all the bottom with the PVA and then set it down on top carefully. There we are. So now get down in line to make sure everything's lined up. Yeah, perfect. And there we are. We have the top of the lighthouse. So I'll let that dry, hopefully that'll be fine. And then um, I'll come along and work out how I'm gonna do the lid. 
later. But yeah, I might have a bit of a fiddle. I may end up doing it with super glue. I'll let you know if I do or do make any adjustments, but that's basically the, uh, the idea. While the uh, top of the tower is drying, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint this area here using my Africa color. Um, I probably should have done it before, um, but yeah, that's gonna just be painted very quickly with the Africa color and left. Um, and actually, once that's painted, I'm going to look at gluing in place the building that goes on top of that bit there, because that's also something that I may as well get done. Um, and once that's in place, or maybe before I glue it, I will paint the top of the building with a kind of very dark grey black uh, to be this is what uh, this is this area here which is actually very dark grey black so yeah so I'm just going to get a little bit of this these processes done as well I may as well one thing to say is I am doing this build really methodically I'm not I'm, try, I'm not trying to do too much any much at one time I'm just doing a little bit every day and by doing a little bit every day I'm finding I'm making a lot of progress and not feeling under lots of pressure. Sometimes a build where you've got to start and finish, come up with a concept, design it and build it all in two weeks can sometimes feel a little bit like it's a bit of a rush. But this time it hasn't. It's felt, felt nice because I've been able to just keep going and keep going and keep going, steadily do it, steadily get there. And uh, yeah, so there we are. So that's painted. Here is the building, which will be going in the middle. I'll paint around the inside of that all with a dark gray, clip the top off the pin, because that pin will then press into there, and then the pin will stick up and the actual lighthouse will be able to stick onto the top. And the only other thing that I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get a lighter gray, and I'm gonna paint the sides and the top of the platform, and also just draw a line down the side, which will be the color of the, um, of the, of the bricks on the side of the tower. And I'll also draw that same color just around the edge of the wall, around the edge of this. So that's gonna be the top of the wall. So yeah, we're just gonna do a little bit of detailing work. Just get that out of the way. I'll be using my, my grays for that, our dark gray, as I say, um, for the top of this and the lighter gray for everything else. Um, and I will show you what it looks like when it's done, because it will probably actually just, I'll just glue it all together straight away. So I'll just get it in there. So I'll bring you along when I finish that, and then that will be me done for today. And uh, a lot of very, very, very good progress. The next big thing, of course, is going to be doing the actual water effect down here. So yeah, that'll be the next big thing for me to do. Um, and obviously, <laughs> the actual top of the tower. But we're getting there on that. I'm really, really, really happy with how that's looking. It's drying up nicely. This is such an Operation Budget and Scarper, it really is. So to do the top of the lighthouse, I've cut the end off of this uh, paintbrush. <laughs> um, I did it off camera because I wasn't sure if it's going to work um, and it has worked so what I'm now going to do is super glue that on top it's not perfect shape but it certainly is going to be good enough for me so a little bit of super glue a couple of drops of super glue just around the edge of the rim and what I'll do is I'll drop it in place and that will dry relatively quickly and then I will be left with deciding what I'm going to do about the railing if I even care enough about the railing to require to see it. So you can see it's not perfect. Oh, I've gone out of shot, apologies, it's so small. It's not perfect, but it certainly is gonna give the right impression and uh, gonna look pretty cool, I'm pretty happy with that. So yeah, that's that done. I will now go away and glue that all to the actual tower. Um, and uh, yeah, we're pretty close to done, apart from the C, which will be the next thing to do. So a little bit of PVA and we'll drop the tower on top or the light bit on top of the tower. So we'll probably not need that much PVA. I'll spread it out a bit. Um, drop that on and then that'll, when that's dried, that'll be nice. And secure, make sure I get it central. Pretty happy with that. Okay, so we'll let that dry. Um, and when that's dry, then I'll come along and I'll do the water effect and any other detailing I might do. I had a really good suggestion from a guy to put some white stones marking the edge of the path, which I might very well do as well. So um, I'll start to do those detailing things. Once this is dry, that'll probably take a good few hours to dry properly. So it may even be tomorrow yet. But I'm, I'm nicely ahead on this one. I'm not feeling too much pressure of time, which is really, really cool. And uh, a good change from last month. The 20 minute painting this evening involved finishing off the skin tone on these two and then me realising that these are actually the African warriors over here 
and therefore I'd done them wrong. So I repainted two of them and I've got two more as you can see behind to do tomorrow evening. Um, it was fun, it was a nice evening. I did get, I did settle down with some music and enjoy that. And uh, yeah, it's good to get back to just the normal 20 minutes, though the two hours last night was a lot of fun. Um, it was tiring, so yeah, 20 minutes and now I've got a few more other bits to do before I can get an early night, I hope. Water isn't blue, but the sea in this picture is. So what I'm gonna be doing is coming along with this nice deep blue and painting it over the top of where the sea is. Now this may be something I do multiple layers on and multiple colors, but for now I just wanna get a base coat down of this blue. So let's get that done. I may put some rocks at the base of the, of the, um, of the cliff and things like that, but we'll get to that. There we are. So when that's dry, I'll come along and I'll decide what the next step is going to be. Um, I might now do the the pathway. I'm not sure though. I'm going to see whether I can find enough small white stones to do it. And if I can't, then I won't because I don't want to do it badly. And there is a clear path there now. But I'm going to have a have a bit of a research. I might do that. I might dig through my, my stones and see what I can find. I couldn't record what I just said. So you've getting the after effects. What I noticed was that I glued the actual lighthouse on upside down. <laughs> I'd put the glass bit on the bottom and then glued the blue rim and then the red top. And if you have a look at the pictures, it's blue, then the black, then the plastic, and then the red on top. What a idiot. So what I'm gonna do now is I've got to glue that back. I've managed to pry it apart. I swear, said quite a few rude words that don't fit in with how I normally talk on this channel, though I am normally quite happy with any language, don't really care. But yeah, this was, uh, yeah, I swore. <laughs> because I'd almost done a really stupid thing. Fortunately, I've been able to save it. So, um, and ultimately that's all we can ask for. Try not to glue my fingers to anything. I should probably have done this separately as well. Anyway, I'm now going to try and recover this. I'm currently gluing my fingers to everything. There we are. Let's glue that to that and leave that there for the minute. I'm going to recover this and I'll bring you back when I come to the next step as well. But yeah, in the, aim, in the name of honesty, what an idiot. What an idiot indeed. Glued it on upside down. There we are. Super glue everywhere. This is going badly. I'm turning the camera off. I'm going to fix this. This evening I did the other two African warriors in the correct skin tone and then I managed to get the quivers on each of the archers and also the leather, not that there's any leather on this dude, but the leather strap coming across the front of three of them as well. So it was a really productive evening, cracking on now. Uh, 20 minutes is, is a very short amount of time to paint, but you definitely can get a lot done in it if you just focus. So yeah, I'm pleased. Uh, I, I kind of want to do more than 20 minutes on these models, but I'm really happy to be doing the challenge. So I'm going to stick with it um, and just to see how much I can get done in the month. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm champing at the bit to do more. Another really productive 20 minutes this evening, and I've got quite a few different processes done on all of these four arches. Um, sorry, that's going out of focus there. Um, just get that in focus now. So you can see that we've got some feathers, uh, we've got the actual bows are now painted and I've done um, some of the details as well around um, on the straps. So yeah, really, really fun evening. Uh, got a lot done um, and they are now rapidly approaching completed and I can crack on with the next one. What I do with, with these is I do these in batches of four now that I've done all the, all the skin tones because I'm actually painting them to the artwork on the box and so it's just easier for me to work in a smaller batch. So yeah, batches of four for now. That that's the first four done. I've got two other batches to do and then the um, and then the chieftain and then I'll have all of my Native Americans to use in a game, which is really, really cool. I have been thinking about this for quite a long time and I've done a test, which I don't often do, as regular watchers will know, of how this might actually end up working. So what, I built this little uh, kind of mock-up here, which is gonna be really good. And it's proven to me that basically, yes, I've got just about enough space on the actual layout because I've been able to place that in there. But also, this is not a material I want to use. I'm just not very happy with it. So my second attempt, my second way of doing it is gonna be using um, coffee stirrers. And here is my practice run. So what I've done is I've got some thick masking tape and I've got more over here. When I'll show you how I go about doing it in a second. 
taped it down onto the bed bench actually not onto the board and then stuck um, pressed down some coffee stirrers in they are this is going to be the side wall they are the correct there is enough distance there to do the side wall and there is enough height as well and then I covered that with PVA glue and then stuck my uprights on to hold it together and if you've watched my build video where I made the um, seafront fortification you'll recognize some of these construction techniques from there but this is going to be taking it a bit further because I'm going to do the whole building in it so that is the state that I'm going to get to and I'm going to make pretty much all the shapes that I need up front that's what I'm going to do now so I'm going to sit down here with this board and I've got the board so I can move it around because once I did this I then had this tape to the uh, to the table with weights on it and I couldn't move it but if I have the board then I can move it around a bit better after I've worked with it and clear the space for more for more hobbying uh, so I'll show you how I'm going to do this with the first one and then um, I'll probably pop some music on or something here and turn the camera off and just crack on because I need to get this done so my idea is that I'm going to actually make a um, make the ends, so the gable ends while you're watching. That is these. So they don't need to be very wide, but they do need to be tall. So what we'll do is we will tear off a couple of lengths of this and secure it down just by folding it over. That's all you need to do. And obviously then it will join together in the middle and we'll do this until we can see that we have enough so i'm actually going to put one more because i want to have some overlap there we are so now we've got enough so what i will now do and this is relatively wasteful but don't worry i will be able to reuse most of these sticks is i just go along and literally and let me move the camera just for a second there we go. you can see a bit better from that angle so i literally just place them in like this now one of the reasons why I'm doing like this is the trumpet that I've got makes a lot of noise and I'm also just want to get it done I don't want to disturb Rosie who's asleep downstairs so what we'll do is we'll stick loads and loads of these onto this sticky back so let's get that done there we are we have enough now probably to do two gable ends so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab myself a pencil, which I forgot to grab, and then I'll show you the next step. Now I've got a pencil, I'm going to roughly draw around this shape. And I'm not really worrying too much about it being completely accurate because this is not how I'm going to actually cut the shape out when I get to that stage. This is merely so that I can position my uprights correctly to give support. And as you can see, I do have sufficient to do two walls, which is really, really cool. So, draw your shape around it. So it doesn't have to be completely accurate because this is the reason for the next, for this step, is we're gonna paint on our PVA, like so. PVA, yes, it is PVA. I often say paint on our paint when I mean PVA. So we paint on the PVA. This will get in the cracks and will help to join the actual um, strips together as well as the next application which is going to be matchsticks. There we are. So we have a goodly application of PVA over the whole of the area that you want to keep. Again, this is not the only thing that's going to hold it together, so do not worry. I then have a pack of matchsticks. Now, these are hobby matchsticks, which don't have any of the sulfur or whatever it is on them. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come along here and I'm going to add them on in such a way that they will provide support when I cut it out. So just in board of where my marks are, and trying to think about where the um, so, so I didn't focus where the where that kind of window is going to be, in case I do decide that I want to cut the windows out, which I may not. So for this, I'm going to need four. You can see that works quite nicely, joins them together quite well. Okay, so we've positioned our 
supports, our struts that are going to be on the inside of the building and that's going to make sure that when I cut these out there's actually something supporting and joining everything together. Though like I say I will be doing some more and what I then come along and do is pop some weight on like that and I will leave that now to dry overnight for a very long time so it's definitely dry to come to the next step. So what I'm going to do now is pop some music on like I say and I'm going to start making the rest of the panel so I've done this wall and these two end walls. I need to do this wall, this wall, this wall, and this wall. So I haven't got that much to do yet. So I'll get that done uh, in exactly the same way. And I will bring you back when I have something more to show you. Uh, whenever that is, I will show you the next step when I get to it. But I can tell you what, I'm really, really pleased to actually make some progress because I've been staring at this all week. It's now Thursday. Um, I did expect to do more on the railway this week but you know you've got to wait for inspiration and i finally think i've worked out a way of doing it so yeah a little bit a little bit slow to start but we are getting there this i think will work and if it doesn't well at least i've tried i've left this for a day um, having previously done something at least every day of the build and the reason i did that is i wanted to think and i have thought and i've decided that i'm going to come along and the bucket you can see just out of shot here is my unsifted backyard gravel and I'm going to put some gravel, not everywhere, but I'm just going to use some of Luke's uh, fast drying basing glue, put a couple of dollops in a few places and do them as rocks at the base of the cliff. Um, so I'm going to do that now, so it will not take very long. We'll just put a couple of dollops in a few places, not very many. And when that's dry, I will then come along with some of my um, water effects and I'll start to do the water. The other things that are left to do are white stones along the path, which I'm still working on. I don't have any to hand and I need to find some because I really like the idea. Um, and then also doing, as I say, the water effects. Those are the things that are left to do really. The final thing which I need to do is paint on and put the details on the wall of the building because there are doors. Um, and windows and what have you that I need to um, have there. Uh, but that can also wait probably, um, or I might do it after I've done this. That's just very, very tiny detailing. So anyway, there we are. So we've done ourselves a few rocks just at the base of the cliff. Get some more small ones for there. And that will mean that when I come and do my water effects, I can then do a little bit of white water coming up to those, a little bit of ripple, and it will look really nice. Uh, but we're not far off on this, I don't think. Um, yeah, I'm going to let that dry now. I'll just shake this off back into the uh, tub already. Um, that's already ready to be emptied. And uh, yeah, that will look like a really nice little bit at the base of the, of the cliffs. This evening, as expected, I managed to finish off the four warrior archers. And then I've started on another four plus the chieftain. So the chieftain is this guy here. And what I've done on these is I've done their hair. That's what I did on the other warriors. I'd already done the skin tones, obviously. But on the chieftain, I've done his hair and also his club. So tomorrow I'll carry on with those five and hopefully get them done very quickly. And then I'll be on to the last four. And then maybe, I'm not sure whether I'm going to do these as part of the 20 minute challenge. But then I have these fellas on their barrels which I really do want to get done. So I might pick them up as part of it as well. We'll see how it goes. I am very strongly considering continuing this for the whole year, but let's see how it goes as well. Let's get on to this C effect, this water effect. So I've just got some here, some Liquitest gloss gel, and I'm gonna be using that here to build up some wave patterns coming in. Now I don't want it to be too crazily kind of like uh, yeah, a sea, so not big waves. It's a calm sea in the picture, so it's going to be a calm sea on my diorama. But there certainly does still need to be some ripples. And the benefit of this is, when it dries nice and clear, you better see that nice rich blue, which is what I want to have underneath. So I've just got an old brush here. I'm going to stipple it on. And it might be that I do a couple of applications of this. It's what now, Friday. The uh, end date is next Monday, so I don't really need to be panicking too much about my timings. So yeah, been a really fun little build this. I'm glad I went for this, this um, idea instead of the other one that I had. I think this has been more fun than making a cliff, which was gonna be my other idea. 
So now that I've got it all covered, I can come in and start to put some actual kind of waves. But like I've said, it's supposed to just look like a kind of calm, meandering sea rather than there being a driving current coming in. Obviously on a day like this, you don't need to have a, a lighthouse. So there we are. I'll let that go off. That looks quite nice. Um, and then when I'm happy with the ripples, and I'll tell you if I do more than one application, uh, I'll come in with a white dry brush and then that'll be pretty much the seed done. The lesson here is I can never have too many projects on the go. I've been staring at this and now I'm gonna start it. So let me get it open, we'll have a look and we'll start to assemble it. There we are, that's the uh, single use plastic out of the way. So this here is the Mexican church, as you can see, number two. And the instructions are basic. Uh, my immediate reaction is. So we're going to make the framework, then we're going to build a facade, then we're going to build the tower, and then we're going to build the roof. So it actually looks like it should be quite easy. And it, the good thing for, with this is I'll be able to build this facade and, uh, or sorry, build the, the, the building, and then do um, have a look at the facade, build them all separately, and then work out how I'm going to texture it because this is uh, going to almost certainly be done with the same Adobe, the same texturing as I did on the two houses for this series I've already done. So that's pretty cool. So I'm going to sort through these sprues and then I'll come back and we'll look at building this first section. So here we are, we've got the sprues we need. We need sprue number one and sprue number six. The floor is on sprue number six, which I believe I can probably just pop out very easily. Normally you can with these larger ones, but do be very careful if you're doing this, you don't want to break it. And then on sprue number one, you've got the walls and the gable ends as they call them. So this there is the floor assembly, which we have here. You can see where the entrance is. And on sprue one, you've got the walls and the gable end and uh, as well. So what I'll do now is I won't press those through. I will um, cut them out carefully using my knife uh, just to push out the little kind of contact points and then glue them together, a little bit of PVA, hold them in place and I'll bring you back for the next step when I get to it. As you can see the church is basically assembled. I'm going to skip the facade steps which is this section here, and go on to these two. So I can do all these right now, I've got a little bit of time, get them all drying, and then one of the reasons I'm leaving that is I need to decide what I'm gonna do with the texturing, uh, because it could be that when I apply these, um, I'm gonna need to either paint them on the sprue or something to make them look stone-colored like I want to, or prime them at the very least, and then do the texturing after I've glued them on, or maybe I need to do the texturing before. So I just need to do a little bit more digging on that, so I'm gonna leave that. So we're gonna move on to step eight from step two. Glue the upper church walls, Q, which is these two here on sprue two, to the roof supports, which is these here on sprue three. So I'll get those cut out. And then once you've done that, you then stick, glue the aisle side roof panels to the main roof panels Okay, and to the supports. So we take um, probably the, um, I think there's two on each side. So we take these two here from sprue two and stick them to the supports. So I will get that, them cut out and glued together and show you what it looks like when it's done. So I thought I'd show you very quickly how I put that together. So this wall slots in here with these two notches so it goes into the vertical section. And then on the other side, which you can see I've completed, the two areas of roof just go onto the tabs like that so i will now complete that there i thought i'd show you before i put it all together it actually is a little bit finicky to keep it secure i may end up putting some clamps here and here just to hold it in place and some more there um, and then i'll bring you back for the next step when i get to it this is absolutely flying together so i've done the roof you can see <laughs> the clamps there i have clamped it all so now we're going to move on to the tower and i'm going to do the base of the tower and then that's going to have to stop because it is actually going to be my lunch time and i do need to eat something before i go back to work so what we do is we take these four sections here out of sprue six and i believe we take these three joining sections here out of sprue sorry sprue four and sprue six and it says you glue the tower sides which is this together and tower door panel and X bell tower access hatch. So basically what you're looking at doing is you're doing this and all of these and that makes it into one strong stable square because these drop down over the top, I, I presume. 
I'm not sure. So I'll pop these out, have a look, and I'll bring you back when I'm gonna actually start to assemble them. So it was actually a little bit complex until I had a brainwave. I obviously have not yet started on the facade, but what I've done is I've pulled this front step thing, is what they call it, and by slotting the, the base of the tab into the little area there where it's gonna eventually sit, it acted as a very good third hand while I assembled the rest of the tower around it. So what I'm now gonna do is glue that together. I'm gonna to clamp it. I'm not gonna glue it to the base yet because I'm not ready to, but you can see on the top that this is how that works. So there's the stepped kind of like um, protrusion here, tab here, um, and one of them will slot down on top of that one, uh, going down over all of it, and then the next one will only fit down over down to the next level and then finally the one with the trapdoor will only fit on the very top level so that's how that works so I'll get that glued together and then I think I'm going to leave that because I'm getting quite hungry now and uh, let that go off I just thought I'd show you that's how I had to do it uh, if you're struggling with that step as well yourself the next section of the tower uses items from all of the sprues I was trying to select which ones to use and uh, realized having looked at it that actually it is, it is all of them so these are the walls, obviously, that go around here at the bottom. You can't really see, but they're the, uh, they're the arches. And then we have the four platforms here, and then we have the four kind of crosses here, and then finally we have the actual cross that goes on the top. Now the cross that goes on the top will probably end up being um, wrapped in silver foil or something like that to make it look really cool. Um, so don't worry that I'm not priming it, I have ideas for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the same technique as I did before. So I'll cut these out. The tower now should be dry because I've had my lunch and it's a bit later on in the day. So the tower now should have enough um, adhesion to stay together. So I'll be able to assemble on top of the tower using the four kind of holes there or the eight holes there to make it stable so um, and what i might actually end up doing is set it down inside this base again just so that it's on a it doesn't wobble that might make it a bit easier as well so yeah so i'm going to put that together and i'll bring you back and show you what it looks like when it is done so here's the thing i thought i'd just quickly show so what you have to do at the top of this tower is you've got to kind of position these uh, all like so you've got the slot in the middle so you can see through it and then you've got to put these crosses on top of the same and then you've got to slide that cross through um, and make it all like kind of match up now that's going to be very very hard unless you do it like this assemble them on the cross <laughs> an odd thing to say but yeah assemble them on the cross and what you'll then find is you'll then be able to position it pretty accurately all the way down and position it finally accurately on the top of the actual tower. So as you can see we can push that in and that's now in place and then we can get some more PVA. That's a bit too much. We really don't need very much PVA when you put in MDF together. Less is more. That was a bit careless. Take most of that off. There we are. And then get the next one and slide that in place. And by doing this, you're ensuring that every single one is positioned in the correct place and is not going to have, you're not going to miss. So if you try to do it the other way around, you're very likely to be a millimetre or two off and a millimetre or two off is enough for you then to break your MDF. So I just thought I'd show that as a little trick if you come across anything like this. Don't feel too bound to how they appear to be telling you to do it in the instructions. Have a look, see if there's a way of doing it that will help you, like this. And this now will all be lined up perfectly when it all is assembled. So this is the final one for the cross shapes. Make sure it's all straight and I've not done something stupid. I might need to go off camera, I'm not in shot. I'm going to finish this up and I'll bring you back when it's done. All of a sudden... I've realised that I can do the facade because you're not actually sticking it necessarily to the church until you've actually assembled it on this base, which is obviously a much better thing. So what it says is to take the facade front, F, which is this shape here, which appears to just be about to fall out, so that's good. There we are, done. Um, and glue the decorative frame panels to the facade front, which are all of these. 
So I can pop these out very carefully. One of them is already very loose from previously handling this. So I can pop these out and glue these to this decorative front, however it's supposed to be. I will need to look a bit closer at the pictures and I will bring you back when I've worked it out. Assemble all that and then stick it to the base which I've been using to put my tower up. By the way, I did break the cross as everyone knew I would uh, who was watching I'm sure. However, what I've decided to do is make a bonus out of it and so I've actually glued it back on crooked and it's going to be the church of the broken cross. So there we are and I may need to break the one on the front of the church up here as well but I won't do that yet let's see so yeah I'm going to get all these things pulled out and work out what I actually need um, and where it goes and I'll bring you back when I've worked that out and show you how to assemble this section so there we are I've worked that out <laughs> it is pretty cool actually some of this stuff is very very fine so be very careful when you're cutting it out but fundamentally what you do is you get the large section with the curly bits and that needs to line up with the holes on the bottom, which is where it will attach eventually to the actual church, where the church will slot in. Um, and then you place everything, I mean, everything else is pretty much self-explanatory. Once you've worked that out, you can pretty much see where it's gonna go. So this nice decorative thing is gonna be glued on top. And what I might end up doing, to be honest, is making this in sub-assemblies. So I might glue that to that. Um, so glue these two sections together first um, and then um, also glue that on at the top. So I've got another little section here that goes on the triangle bit and while that's going off we can glue this curly bit that goes right at the very top of the facade and the window surround that goes in there. So I'm probably going to do those sub-assemblies and then I might not glue this on, this bit here on, until I've worked out how it's going to actually attach to the church, simply because I need to make sure it lines up. And the worst thing in the world is when you make a mistake and it's glued and then nothing works and it's really annoying. So I'll get that glued together and I'll bring you back for the next step shortly, which will be already um, I've been at this maybe since lunch and it's just after lunch now. Um, if you're wondering how I get the time, I have a build running which has not even started yet and when it does start it will take about seven minutes and I can't do much while it's running. So I take those chances to do some hobbying, which is what I'm very lucky for. So yeah, so I'm, the next bit is going to be uh, going to be painting and, uh, and doing the uh, uh, texturing. So yeah, this is a, a superbly quick build and I'm really enjoying it. So I was wise to not glue it in place because I was actually completely wrong. I have looked a bit closer and I'm still not going to glue it in place because I want to make absolutely sure that I'm right. But I'm pretty sure that that is actually going to glue on right at the bottom because these two notches I think are where the steps slot into and then the notch behind that's hidden is where it attaches to the church. So yeah, I think I'd actually made a mistake um, which happens very, very often and you can see that that does nicely kind of like line up there with that base thing so yeah i'm uh, I'm, I'm quite pleased that i that i kind of paused on that i'm going to let what i've done there dry though um just to weight it down a little bit as well actually to make sure it doesn't uh, doesn't warp and what have you because it's very thin mdf so i'm going to pop some weights on that leave that to dry and the next thing will be gluing these three things together before i then attach them to the church if that's what i decide to do so yeah nearly finished though very very cool now let's talk roofs. So I have these, which are also from Sarissa, and I'm gonna use these to do the roof on the top of this church, mainly because I'm a bit lazy, and also I really like what they look like. So we'll pull these out of the wrapping, take a sheet. As you can see, this one's been started. Um, and funnily enough, I've just been looking at this, um, and I've realized that actually, uh, they're not wide enough <laughs> so this is going to be a little bit frustrating um, but it is what it is so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting a section of the roof tile on like that and um, then gluing another section next to it like that and don't worry about overlaps um, um, also you can see that this has got a little bit of, an, of a uh, extra bit of tab you're going to want to remove that and you want to start from the bottom so just use PVA and um, you put the first row on and then the next row goes on offset and overlapping so like that just like that 
maybe a little bit higher. So yeah, so I'm just gonna sit and do that. That's gonna be something that I can do while I'm watching um, builds as well and or, or whatever. Um, and uh, and it just will be something, will take a little bit of time. Uh, you can do it in stages. Uh, what you'll end up with is some probably overlap on one side, not the other, which you can then trim off. So that's how I do it. I don't try and cut to size. I'll just glue them on with an overlap over one side and then trim them all down. And I'll do that for both the top and the bottom roof on this. And then that'll be really nice and ready for painting when I get to the painting stage. I probably could finish this all in one day, but I'm not going to because of other things I want to work on. Um, some of them not terrain related. Uh, so this is probably the last thing I'm going to do this evening. And then I'll leave it all to go off and wait and I'll probably pick up during the week, next week again, get it finished next week. Um, but this is such a simple build that you really could do it in, in a day um, and have it com completed and ready for the um, putting the um, texture on and then tomorrow paint it. So I really could do it in a day. But what we're gonna do is we're working on the steps. And the way that I think it's best to work on, to do them is, um, I've just had a little bit of a play, is if you glue the wider step in first, okay and then take the narrower step which slots in on top and that's going to need to be glued both to the step below and also in at the tabs so you're going to put a little bit of glue like this I just always keep saying you don't need that much glue and that then can slot in and what that does is it slots into those two tabs there and then, this is actually the way that I'm gonna suggest that you do it. You then glue it to this base, and then that means that this will slot in nicely, and there's actually a little place for it to accept at this end here, which means that you'll definitely get that all lined up and looking perfect, as opposed to if you try to like guess where to position this, you might be, as I've said before, a couple of millimeter out, and that would be really annoying. So with those two in place, we're gonna glue along the bottom here, so let's do that. That sits in there nicely. And then now we can turn it around and we can apply glue to the back of this shape and then slot that on and everything is gonna be gravy. So there we are, that would be how I would recommend that you go about doing this. If you wanna do it differently, of course, I'm not a I'm just showing you how I'm doing it, but that seemed to me to be the best way to achieve a good, um, to make sure everything goes in the right place, so you're not like trying to bend things in after they're glued or whatever. And long-term viewers will know that sometimes I don't manage that and I do end up trying to bend things in. And when you try to bend things in, you break them. So no one is happy then, least of all you with your nice expensive kit that you spent your money on. You want it to look nice. So yeah, so I'll get this done and then that'll be the last, as I said, I think for this session of building. It's been a really fun build this so far. Really enjoyed it and I can't wait to get texturing. So that slots in like that. And what I'll probably end up doing is getting some clamps just to hold everything in place to make sure it doesn't move. And then well, that'll go off nicely over the next couple of hours and I'll be ready. And that looks really nice. What an impressive looking facade that really is. Really, really nice. I'm gonna clamp it in place and then go on and do some other things and I'll bring you along for the next step when I get to it. The warband of Warrior Archers is now done and I've washed them all, so I'm very pleased with that. That's not focusing very well, apologies, there we are. Um, and then I've made a start um, on more of these ones here, which are the Young Warriors, which is my second batch of these I've painted. I've done the quivers, the wood on the bows. I've done um, the red ties and also the loincloths. So I've got quite a lot done. I didn't actually get to the uh, Chieftain because as I finished the last one, my time ran out. So it was absolutely perfect time this evening, which is the second time this month. It's been absolutely dead on, which is really cool. So yeah, it's a good progress this evening. Very pleased with that. These have now all dried. <clears throat> I left them quite a few days actually. It's been, it's uh, Sunday now as I come to this. Um, you can see that there's some little bit of issue here on this one particularly that's lifting it's not quite dried right but with the 
Um, matchsticks glued across, that should be okay. So what I now need to do is get the some exact, and when I say exact, I mean very exact, templates so that I can then cut these out and start to work with them. So I'm gonna make use of my squared paper, uh, which is gonna help me to be a little bit more accurate. And I'm just gonna sit here with a pencil and, with, um, and just draw out until I'm very happy. And then I'll cut them out using a knife, using a craft knife and a metal ruler to make sure that I get absolutely straight right down the line, not scissors. And then what I'll be able to do is drop those templates on here, glue them on and then cut around them. So it is a little bit of an involved process. There might be a quick way of doing it. If you have one, pop it in the comments below. Any ideas I've not thought of, I would be very, very happy to hear from you if you do have some ideas. But otherwise, I'm just gonna crack on with how I'm doing it <laughs> because all I've got is in my own head. So yes, yeah, so I'd be very interested to hear any alternative ideas. So I'm gonna sit down now, just gonna make a cup of tea and measure out and cut them out and stick them on just using PVA um, and leave them overnight again. And then I can come in with the Dremel and cut around them and then I can start to assemble the actual building. There we are, here are the shapes that I need. So what I've got now is one of my many, many safety rulers. <laughs> and I've got my sharp knife and I'm gonna hopefully do this correct first time though most of the effort of that was actually working out what the exact dimension should be so I've done all this one all down the right side well all down the correct side on the left hand side of the paper so I can do one cut and then remove that and that'll make that a lot easier. And you can see using a knife and a straight edge is very, very accurate. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut all those out. I'm not gonna film it all. I just thought I'd show you the, in the beginning. I'm gonna cut those out and then I will glue them onto the bits of the, um, onto, onto the back of the masking tape with PVA, weight it all down and leave it until it's dry. And then I'll bring you back when I come with the Dremel. For tonight, I have nearly finished these five. So I need to paint the bases. And there's a couple of things I've just noticed I've missed. It's not staying in focus very well. Um, but I should get those all completed tomorrow and then be on to the African Warriors afterwards, which is a really, really cool bit of progress. Uh, probably a couple of days on African Warriors and then I will be done with all of my blood and plunder. What a great win and what a brilliant thing to have achieved for this little challenge. So uh, thanks again, BB, for the inspiration and for accepting the challenge. Uh, I'm really pleased with how these are coming out. particularly love how uh, blingy the... Uh, this kind of chieftain type dude is. Try and get that to focus in. Come on, am I too close? Apologies for the terrible camera work. That will focus now, there we are. He's really blingy, he's got his gold medallions on his ring, nose ring in. Anyway, there we are, that's the progress for this evening. Well, there we are. That was a good week, a varied week, and a slightly shorter week, but there's still quite a lot of footage, particularly because of that Sarissa build, which when I did the intro, I'd forgotten about. <laughs> Standing here is a bit pointless. I've not actually ticked anything else off. I am going to hopefully tick something off next week. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna point to the Hobby Bingo, point to the Guardians Hangout, there is an invite now, definitely in the bottom of every one of my videos. So come and join us. We'd love to see you there if you're into SBG um, and want to just chat with a bunch of really cool guys, come and join us. And obviously um, the um, other discords that I'm in are also down there. So come and join me there. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. If you've got this far, I really do appreciate it. Don't forget to pop a comment below. Love reading them, reply to everyone. And as always, please do stay healthy, stay safe and stay well.